Hello everybody, welcome back to the channel. Hope you are all doing well. This is the second video in the exterior visualization workshop. In the previous video, we talked about the design process of the project that we are going to work on. So, if you missed that video, make sure to watch it from the card above or from the link in the video description. In this video, we are going to work on the modeling part. So, for that, make sure to download the CAD file from Patreon. The link also in the video description. Okay, so without further ado, let's jump into the video. Okay, so the first thing to do is to import the CAD file. And we are going to do that by going to File, Import, and click Import. Then select the CAD file and open. From the import options, check rescale and then change the units to meters. So why did I change the file units? Because my cut file is set to meters. For example, this line length is 10 meters. So if your cut file in another unit such as a centimeter or a feet or inch, you have to change it from here in order to get the right scale to work on. So this is very necessary and very important step. Now after setting up the file units, hit OK and here is your card drawing in 3 ds Max. So now we have to center the drawing to the 0, 0 and we are going to do that by selecting the drawing and go to the move tool, right click okay, and then right click on the X and right click on the Y axis and that's it. Now our drawing is centered to the 0, 0. Okay, now before starting anything, let's see how to navigate through the viewports. The standard shortcut is to press Alt and W and you can navigate through like top view, point view, perspective and left view. Or you can change it from, for example, from top view if you press F, that will bring you to the front view. If you press T, that's top view. But I find it a little bit easier to set a shortcut for that. Instead of pressing Alt W, we are going to change this shortcut. So how we can do that? I'm using 3ds Max 2020. Uh, they changed the location of the shortcuts. So I will show you like in the previous versions, you can go to customize and custom user interface. And from here, you can change the shortcuts. But now they change the location. As you can see, hotkeys have changed. So you have to go to customize hotkey editor. And from here, you can change the shortcuts. So now let's search for Maximize viewport toggle. So go to hotkeys and then press space. I'm going to assign space key as a hotkey and then press assign. So now you have space and Alt and W to navigate through the viewports. Hit done and save after that. So now if you hit space, you can navigate easily through the viewports. Okay, so now after importing the CAD drawing and checking the units, let's separate the side from the elevations. So select the CAD drawing, go to modify, and then select the spline or hit 3 in the keyboard. And then select the front elevation and go to detach, hit detach. Okay and select the side elevation and also detach ok so now we have front elevation side elevation and sides but we have to change the center point so select the front elevation and go to hierarchy affect pivot only and center to object and you can select the rest of the drawings also affect pivot only center to objects now we're having the elements separating from each other. Let's turn off the grid by hitting G in the keyboard. And now we have to snap each elevation to its right location. So select the elevations, hit rotate, and rotate them. Now it's easier to snap the angle, so press A in the keyboard to activate the angle snap and rotate the elevations 90 degree. Okay, about the side elevation also rotate it to 90 degree. Now we have to activate snap button. 
So firstly, let's show you what's the difference between snaps. We have two snap, two and a half snap and 3D snap. So what's the difference between each other? 2D snap will work only on the 2D shapes. Okay, for example, select this elevation. Activate snap by pressing the icon or S on the keyboard. Right click on snap and then clear all, choose only vertex. Okay, now you can see you can snap the elevation to any points on the 2D shape. But if you change the viewport to perspective, now you can you can snap it to the 2D shape because it works only on 2D planes. Okay, for this case, uh, you can change it to two and a half, and now you can snap it to the 2D shape. This is only snap the 2D shapes or the 3D perspective as, as a 2D plane. Let's take another example to show you that more clearly. Let's have the two boxes. Okay, now if you are hitting the snap and change it to the two, two and a half, you can snap this point to this point, okay, with no issue. But if you change it to the perspective mode, now if I want this point to go to this point and I drag it, drag it to here, you can see that it did it as a 2D plane. The only way to snap this point to this point is to change it to 3D snap. Now you can snap this point or this corner to, for example, this corner. Now you have a real 3D snap. Okay, so every snap type is useful in some cases and some cases is not. So we are going to use the snaps type a lot in the modeling part and we are going to see how to use each type in the right way. Okay, now back to our drawings. Now I have to snap the elevations to the side. So select the front elevation, hit S to activate the snap and change the type to 3D snap. Now select the corner and drag it to here. And now we are setting up the first elevation correctly. Now select the side elevations, also drag, drag it from the corner to its right location. And now you snap the elevations to the side correctly. This can't be done by using like a two and a half snap or 2D snap. It's only work on the 3D snap. Okay, now after we are setting up our CAD drawing, we have to freeze it. So select all the 2D shapes and right click, freeze selection. Okay, so now we have freezed our 2D shapes. And now you can't accidentally change it or move the drawings. So it will be locked on their position. Now, one last thing to do is to go to snap tool and hit the right click and go into the options and activate snap to frozen object and that's it. Okay, so now we can start the modeling process. So hit space, go to the front view. Okay, let's see our design. So as I said in the design process, the architect starts from a simple block and then he divided it to a smaller units. After that, he make the openings in each unit. So now in the modeling part, we will start from one unit, do the modeling for it, and then we will copy it to fill the entire elevation. And there are some techniques to do that. So I will show them to you. And after that, we will choose the easiest one to work on. Okay, so let's see how to do one unit back to 3ds Max. Let's choose this unit. So the first method is create a box and you can do that by going to create geometry standard primitives and select box hit s in the keyboard to activate snap and then drag and release it pull it up and then go to modify let's set the height to 4 so now we have a box 4x4x4 four by four by four. now make a cylinder also go to create geometry and select cylinder just drag just click and drag it to create cylinder release the right button and then drag it now you can go to modify and in, uh, increase the sides let's go to our perspective view let's intersect let's select them and press alt q to isolate them 
Now you can go to select the box and go to create compound objects and then select prop boolean and start picking and by that you have subtract the cylinder from the box this is the first method but I don't recommend it because later on when you start to modify the geometry you will have a lot of errors and a lot of uh, irregular polygons so for that I don't recommend to use this method and I recommend to use the second method that I will show you now so go to the front elevation and now go to create shape and select line now activate the snap and we are working on the snap two and a half and recreate the shape just click on the, on the vertex of the old shape close line and now go to modify select the vertex and relocate it turn off the snap and it manually now go to interpolation and increase the steps to let's say 15 okay now select the line select the vert vertex on the curve all of them and hit right click and then smooth okay now go to modify and add extrude modifier give it amount of 4 and that's it. let's see it in the perspective okay from the top view snap it hit snap s two and a half and drag it to its right location now we have just used extrude modifier and as you saw we go to through the modifier list and search for extrude and we will do that uh, if we want like uh, edit poly or any other modifiers this method is a little bit uh, harder and it will make you slower to work. The best way is to say, uh, put your most used modifiers in a list. So we will go to configure modifier sets, this icon here, click it and hit configure modifier sets. Now you have here total bottoms. Let's say we want 10, uh, 10 modifiers to use it. Okay, so the first modifier will put next to it and edit poly you can uh, add bend bubble cup hold delete mesh perfect t box lay latest and turbo smooth shell and symmetry okay so now i just put uh, 12 modifiers and you can always like uh, put another modifiers and uh, increase the total buttons as you like but for now these are just fine so click OK and now back to configure modifier sets and press show buttons. So now you have like all the modifiers you want and you can access it very easily. For example, if I want to add edit poly, I just will hit edit poly and automatically we will have edit poly modifier. And this is much faster than the than the traditional way when you have to go to modifier list and search for edit poly and after that select editing. From the easy access list, you can just tap the modifier that you want and that's it. Okay, now let's change the viewport style to play. Go to here and change it to play. You can press F4 to show or hide the edge lines. Okay, now let's check our geometry. So here we have a lot of uh, segments. So in order to decrease it, select line and go back to the steps and decrease the number, let's say 10. Maybe 5. Okay, 5 will do just fine. You can press F4 to see it, how smooth it is. Okay, now let's snap it up here. So I'll change the snap to 3D and I'll drag this edge from here to here. Okay. Okay, now let's go back to the reference image. And as we can see, we have like this little freeze. Now we have to add it, so select the geometry, this is the place, add edit poly and now hit for or press to select polygon. Okay, let's now hit uh, inset, let's inset it by say 0.15 15 cm and after that hit extrude and 
and let's see it from here. Okay. Point one. Point one five. Hit okay. And now you can get it of this polygon by adding a delete mesh modifier. Okay, so now we have completed the basic form and we have to scatter it or copy it, I mean, to follow the entire elevation. As we can see in the reference image, all the units are the same, but they are different in the rotation and in some proportion. So now we have to copy them and after that we will make the change. You can do it by the basic way and that's by selecting the unit or the object and activate move and hit shift and then drag the object. Release it that will ask you you want want to clone or uh, the clone it as a copy or an instance. In our case we need to use it as a copy and then hit OK. But this method is not accurate as it can be and in the same time it's a little bit slower. So we'll use the second method which is using array. Okay back to our object. Select our object go to tools array and this window will pop up. Now hit preview and change the x-axis we want just five copies five and change it to copy because we will going to change the the proportion of them later on and now just make sure that the x is 4.5 okay this is on the uh, 1d now we have to uh, activate the 2d let's change the count to six in the z-axis type in four minus what okay so it's now snaps perfectly now all you have to do is to change the count to 6k and just make the count the 2d count to 4 and then hit ok okay now this is the front elevation and we will have to repeat the same process to the uh, side elevation okay select all the objects and right click and click on height selection and we will start over from the left elevation or the side elevation just uh, repeat the same process that we did in the front elevation Okay, so now we finished the side elevation. Uh, tap right click and unhide all. Now we have the basic units of the final elevation. What we are going to do now is to ch uh, change the units to match the reference image. We already have that in the CAD file. Hit Ctrl A to select all the units. Go to higher key, effective it only, and then hit center to object. Now you can rotate the units to match the uh, reference uh, image. Okay, so go to the front elevation and then start to adjust the, rot the rotation of the, uh, of the unit. You can put the reference image on the left and snap the max to the right and start adjusting it to match the reference image.
Okay, so now let's see what we have. We finished uh, copying all the basic units to the font elevation and also to the side elevation. And also we, uh, we managed to arrange them to match the reference image. Now we have to make the small changes, for example, stretching this up, removing the bottom of this unit and stretching it down. So how can we do that? So easily just select the units that you want, go to modifiers list that we have created before, choose edit poly and now select the vertex by typing on in the keyboard or the vertex icon, select vertex, activate snap and make sure it's the 2.5 mode and then just snap it to the cut drawing and go on just just see where's the change that you have to make and change it for example this have to stretch all the way up so select the vertex and just snap it up this unit also select the vertex and snap it up and i will just complete the all the changes I will speed up the video now so you can see all the changes. Okay, so this unit is a little bit different. In order to remove the bottom, uh, go to modifier, edit poly, let's hit Alt and Q to isolate it. Select one polygon and then press Shift to loop select and after that uh, go to Grow and hit Grow. Now you can delete it by pressing delete button on the keyboard. After that select border and hit Shift. Shift and drag it to make another. Okay, so uh, I right click and isolate back to the front view. Okay, now just snap it. Activate snap and snap it. Or you can just select the unit that you want, select the vertex, and then select all the uh, internal vertex. Hit delete. After that, select border. Shift and drag it and snap it to its place and this is much easier than the first one so it's up to you to choose which technique that you are prefer in the end you will get the same result okay so we are almost finished our uh, basic form the only thing that remain is the entrance and uh, it's a little bit different than the rest of the units so now we will work on it okay select this corner, hit Alt Q, and the difference is that this unit is have opening from here and also opening arch opening from here. So how can we create that? We we'll simply just select it and go to uh, symmetry, hit symmetry, and go to its options, select mirror, and hit rotate and rotate the mirror plane 90 degree to get this shape now add edit poly modifier and then select the vertex adjust the mirror plane so we get like almost this shape okay now add edit poly and select vertex from the point of view select all the vertex okay now select these vertices also these three and go to weld and increase the distance until it will weld together okay now from the front view just select these all and go down to make planar and make planar on the x axis go also to the right select these all of these and make planar to the y axis okay now we have this shape okay now select all the polygons and go down to polygon smoothing groups and hit clear all that's it for this unit now hit right click and end isolate 
and just adjust it to its right position okay so now by that we have just finished our modeling our basic modeling of the building this is the front view this is the right view this is the top view here is the perspective okay in the next video we are going to work on uh, the rest of the environment such as the fence and how to add the objects and also adding the other details such as the internal curtains and, and the balcony details okay so that's it for this video i hope you find it useful if it does hit the like button subscribe to the channel so you don't miss any upcoming video see you in the next video bye